Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's August the 18th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk a little bit more about David Benavides. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, I made a post-fight video on David Benavides' last fight, and I see some of his supporters are out in the comment section of that video, right? I've noticed that there are some people who are very hardcore boxing fans who believe that this guy, 23-year-old, two-time champion, hasn't gotten his just due. They're waiting for the opportunity. As I mentioned in an earlier video, the pre-fight video, there are those who at 168 have little doubt that David Benavides is the best, right? Unbeaten fighter, heavy KO percentage. So in my post-fight video, I made a mention of another well-known fighter, Saul Alvarez, Canelo. And that's gotten a lot of response. One of the people in the comment section of my prior video makes the claim that Benavides hits harder, has the faster hands, right, is the bigger man, you know, might be able to body Canelo, and that it wouldn't be a contest, right? Well, let me respond to some of the points raised. I think Canelo's widely misunderstood. To me, he's always been a puncher. Right? He has boxing ability, no question about it. But he's always been a puncher. Now, while I'll agree, Benavides is certainly one of the harder punchers in boxing, let's remember, Canelo went one floor up and KO'd Kovalev. Stopped him. Kovalev hits the canvas in that fight. This isn't a Tony Weak stoppage. Right? This is the cleanest stoppage of Kovalev that we had other than the Alvarez stoppage. Right? So, to me, Canelo's power carries. I believe Canelo can stop anyone right within the weight range. I wouldn't expect Canelo to go stop Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury. But let's just say Canelo, to me, shouldn't have his power discounted even in a fight against David Benavides. Let me say too that Canelo's gained weight over the years. Right? I feel much more confident in Canelo's physical well-being now that he's gained weight, now that he's hydrated his body, than I do David Benavides' well-being. Right? This is a guy, 6'2", 6'3", who once weighed 250, who just missed weight, gave up his title on the scales, wasn't one pound over, was almost three pounds over. Right? If you go back through boxing history and you look at people who've been badly hurt in the ring, you're going to find many of them had to cut weight to make weight. I would question Menavides' ability to take Canelo's punches over 12 rounds. Again, let's remember, Kovalev did not make it. Right, Kovalev taken out on a headshot. Let's remember, Rocky Fielding. Also, a belt holder at 168, as of the time of the fight. Wasn't able to survive against Canelo. That was a body attack. Canelo, like Benavides, hits hard up top and down low. Let's also talk about the height, right? Someone mentioned the height gap, and it's substantial. Canelo is really around 5'7", five, 5'8", five, right? I don't care what they list him as. You notice when Canelo fought Floyd Mayweather, right? And Floyd's like 5'8". They were practically the same height. So Benavides would be, if he's 6'2", 
and we're taking the lower end of the range. Right on the telecast, they called him 6'3". If he's 6'2", he'd be a half a foot taller than Canelo. Well, that's true, but the big question is, who does that favor? Their fight styles where a guy who's shorter with power has the advantage. Especially someone like Canelo who can hide his upper body. What I want people to do is to revisit the early part of his fight against Danny Jacobs. There's a moment in that fight where Canelo takes a step back. Jacobs follows him. Then finds that he can't find him. Right, Canelo's moving his upper body. Canelo's moving his head. I also want to encourage people to look at <clears throat> the first fight he had against Golovkin. Now, in the comment section of the earlier video, someone disagreed with me and mentioned the second fight that he has against Golovkin. But in the first fight, Canelo's not tethered to the pocket. He's actually moving around the ring. Right? Boxing a lot more, not relying on his power. Now, while I thought Golovkin beat him in that first fight, I believe it's exactly that kind of movement that would give Benavides, who wants you in the pocket, problems. Right? Canelo would be hard to find because he's a half a foot shorter than Benavides. You add in movement, that complicates things for Benavides. Let me also say that Canelo has a mobile center of gravity. In other words, Canelo can fight upright. He's upright against Kovalev. But Canelo can also bend and fight low. I want people to go back to the Liam Smith fight where Canelo's taking out his body, and Canelo's the kind of guy who could put the crown of his head close to your torso and go to work on your body. Now, if he gets low on Benavides and moves, what I would want, too, is for him to have, we'll call it an Evander Holofield arm bar. In other words, Benavides has a spectacular uppercut. Canelo, in his preparation for the fight, would have to consider it. Evander Holofield had a way of getting inside on a guy and then having his chin on a forearm with an arm bar to protect it from uppercuts. If Canelo can come inside on Benavides, attack him at an angle, and Canelo's an advanced fighter, right? If Canelo can come in at an angle, throw his own withering body shots, and be prepared for Benavides's uppercut, and to also roll away from hooks from this side, I think Canelo would have an excellent shot on beating David Benavides. An excellent shot. I think that's a worthy fight. Let's remember, history is filled with successful shorter fighters. Let me just say, too, that Canelo, now that he can have that last meal, now that he can let his body stay hydrated during preparation, might be even more dangerous at the heavier weights against these taller guys, whether it's Benavides or whether it's Callum Smith. Right, so put me among those who, while I respect Benavides's work, right, he's an elite fighter, believes that Canelo's superior footwork Superior defense. Canelo's hard to hit, folks. Right? He's moving his upper body. He's, he's hard to hit. He's fighting low. 
while also respecting Canelo's power at 168. Folks, you realize that none of Canelo's fights at 168 and above have gone the distance? He's iced the champ at 168, Rocky Fielding, and he's iced the champ at 175, Kovalev. Right? Neither of them went the distance. Canelo's a very strong puncher. I think he's exactly the kind of guy who would give Benavides problems. Let me say this too. I mentioned that as Benavides backs away, he's unprotected. Right? So there was a question raised in the comment section of the earlier video on given that Benavides is 6263 whether a shorter guy like Canelo could take advantage of Benavides being naked as he backs away. Well, understand, Benavides, a puncher, usually the offensive threat in his fights. He's the guy going for the KO in his fights. When he backs away, folks, I believe he's naked up top and down low. Right, he'll just back away like this. Other fighters will turn, have a hand up, and stuff like that. Not this guy. And Benavides isn't Vitaly Klitschko, another guy who leaned a lot, right? Benavides isn't catching shots on his forearm. So I believe if Canelo looks at film, as Benavides moves away, he could try to do what Bob Fitzsimmons, one of Roy Jones's heroes, a middleweight champ who became heavyweight champ and then went back down and became light heavyweight champ. One of the best in history. What Bob Fitzsimmons used to do was to hit guys in the solar plexus. You don't even have to hit guys in the head. You hit guys in the solar plexus the right way, it's like a liver shot. They're going to go down. If Canelo studies film of Benavides backing away, he might be able to time it so that he's there to hit the guy as he's backing away. Doesn't have to be a headshot. It could be a shot to some part of Benavides' body that just depletes him. So Benavides, as I said earlier in my last video, Benavides is one of the more interesting guys in boxing. He's offensively blessed. He's two-handed. He's bigger than most fighters. He has a high work rate. Right? Someone mentioned that he had better stamina than Canelo. I can't really argue with that. Right? He has a high work rate. Even though he's yo-yoing in weight between fights. Right? But I believe Caleb Plant beats him. Right? Plant just moves too well for him, in my opinion. Right? And Plant knows how to use the ring. Plant would make it look stylistic. Right? Kind of like Ali against a slow-moving opponent. Right? Ali Liston. Right? And I believe Canelo would give him a lot of trouble. Right? Canelo could even hang around the pocket more than Plant. Because Canelo is two-handed, has a great straight right hand that's almost Mikey Garcia level, right? That has ring coverage, could get low, is better defensively, right? Canelo's a guy who would have hard-hitting Benavides, worried about his opponent's punching power. Then, of course, who knows what happens if Benavides faces Callum Smith, right? That's a, <laughs> that's a fight of two giants who one has to wonder how they make weight at 168. I also believe a fight against Billy Joe Saunders, and let's remember, Saunders is a lefty on the move, would be a fascinating fight because while Saunders seems to take the sport cavalierly. In the ring, when he's prepared, he's delivered some masterpieces. The first six rounds 
of his fight against Chris Eubank are spectacular, right? I'll agree. Benavides might have better stamina than Billy Joe Saunders, right? Because, of course, they're the last six rounds of the Eubank fight. But Saunders, who beat David Lemieux handily, I believe that fight was in Canada, knows how to deal with hard-hitting, slow-moving guys. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. There are many fascinating fights for Benavides if he can continue to make 168. That's a question, as he just lost his title and used to weigh 250. I appreciate your comments. I hope you leave more of them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.